You want to get down, Missy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was Missy. Um, greetings. My name is Dan Sabo. Um, the reason why I'm making this video, and I've been very interested lately in uh, um, Debbie, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell's proposed uh, federal mandate of requiring all new vehicles uh, be equipped with uh, uh, ignition interlock devices, uh, breathalyzers. Um, and uh, <clears throat> it's a subject that's uh, important to me for several reasons. Uh, th this all started because of a terrible tragedy. There was a Northville, Michigan family driving home, uh, I believe, from vacation. And uh, they were driving through uh, another state near Michigan. And um, uh, their vehicle was struck by a drunk driver uh, who had just been leaving a, a bar, from what I understand. And the entire family was wiped out. Everyone was killed. And it was this horrible tragedy. And and I can definitely empathize with that and with uh, uh, lawmakers wanting to do something uh, because uh, my then girlfriend and I were nearly killed uh, by a drunk driver about five years ago. So I, I, I know what it's like. Um, <clears throat> but the, the reason why I'm making this video is that uh, I think uh, – this knee-jerk reaction proposed mandate uh, to require breathalyzers, it's its really, uh, in my opinion, a bad idea for several reasons. Um, and I'm not saying that this shouldn't be done, but there are a lot of other things that need to be done first that would comparatively and pre precipitously uh, reduce the DUI incidents across the country if uh, the, our federal legislators want to take a look at this. And the reason why I say that is that um, if you're only going to require these breathalyzers on new cars, um, what about used cars? Um, and I'll give you some numbers here. I, I, I read it, uh, an LA Times article by Jerry Hirsch. It came out in June of 2014, and, and he is saying that there, back in 2014, there were about 253 million vehicles on the road, uh, cars and trucks. Uh, average of 11.4 years in age and I think it's gone up 20 to 30 million since then so we could probably safely say 270 to 280 million vehicles on the road um, there's an article by Tom Kirshner Associated Press um, automakers reported 17.27 uh, vehicles produced in uh, the year 2018 so when you compare the number of new vehicles uh, on the road compared to everything else that's only about six to seven percent of all vehicles on u.s roads so uh, right off the bat um, not only does the legislation not go into effect for several years but the first few years you're only going to have about a, cover about six percent of the problem what about the other 94 percent of used vehicles that don't have breathalyzers it's going to take decades to catch up in that regard uh, and the other point is, what are you going to do? Are, are you going to say, okay, well, then we're going to require breathalyzers on all vehicles, new and used? And then are you going to tell people who work a minimum wage job, look, you have to install a, a hugely, hugely expensive breathalyzer system in your vehicle that's probably going to cost more money than the car is worth. So that's wrong, too. So um, as far as uh, a better way to more quickly and precipitously bring down the number of DUI incidents, I, I, I got some facts and figures together. And I wanted to compare two cities. So I'm comparing the, the town I grew up in and the town I live in now. I'm comparing the city of Plymouth, Michigan to Taylor, Michigan. And I looked up some data. So, so for example, the population of the city of Plymouth, uh, according to citydata.com, is about 9,138 residents. City of Taylor has about 61,276 residents. Now, uh, after that, I, I looked up uh, the data contained in the Michigan State Police Drunk Driving Audit, which comes out every year. Uh, I think it's released in July. Um, they keep statistics, and uh, according to their data, City of Taylor had um, uh, 62 breath tests for DUI uh, administered by law enforcement and uh, 23 were refused. So they had a total of 85 incidents. 
Uh, City of Plymouth had 21 breath tests, six blood tests uh, to, to test for being over the limit with, of alcohol, and nine refused. Uh, uh, so for a total of 36 incidents. So um, whether you include the refused tests or not, uh, the numbers indicate that the city of Taylor um, has one-third as many DUI incidents on a per capita basis as does the city of Plymouth. And the way I got those numbers, very simple, I, I took 36 DUI incidents, divided it by the population of 9138, and I came up with 0.39%. And I took city of Taylor DUI incidents, 85 divided by 61,276, and I came up with 0.13%. So on a per capita basis, City of Plymouth has three times as many DUI incidents as the City of Taylor. Now, even if you exclude the refused tests, the numbers proportionately come out the same. Uh, take 27 DUI incidents, divide that by Plymouth population, that comes out to 0.3% uh, DUIs on a per capita basis. And City of Taylor taking 62 incidents, dividing that by their population, that comes out to be uh, about 0.1%. So still there's a three times a higher rate of DUIs in the city of Plymouth and the city of Taylor. So this is, you might know where I'm getting at here. Um, I then contacted, well, actually I got on the Michigan Liquor Control Commission uh, website. They have a database anybody can look up. Um, is there a correlation? between the number of bars in any community and the number of DUI incidents. And logic stands to reason, yes, there would be. So I wanted to find out. So uh, in the city of Taylor, there are 35 on-premise active liquor licenses. In the city of Plymouth, there are a total of 22 on-premise active liquor licenses. So what that means is that in the city of Plymouth, there is one bar for every 415 residents. In the city of Taylor, there's one bar for every 720 residents. So what that means is that city of Plymouth has about 42% more bars per person than city of Taylor. So that strongly suggests that the more bars you're going to have in any given community, uh, the more DUIs you're going to have on the road. Um, and I believe that there's a correlation, too, because about a year and a half ago, I did another video. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. It's called Northville and Plymouth, Michigan, per capita bar and OUI capital of Wayne County. Um, but I, I looked up the data on every community in Wayne County, plotted a graph, and <clears throat> the, the data strongly suggests that the more bars on a per capita basis uh, that you have in any given community, um, the more DUIs you're going to have in that community relative to other communities that have a fewer number of buyers on a per capita basis. So um, the reason why I'm getting at this is because clearly there is a correlation and many of these DUIs are the results of people driving to bars, staying there for hours, having several drinks, and then getting behind the wheel and driving home or wherever else. And let's face it, um, you're going to have a higher incident there than you would if somebody drove to a liquor store, uh, bought a six pack or bought a fifth of uh, gin, drove home and drank it at home. It's just it's just logic. It stands to reason, and the data suggests such. So, what what I'm I'm suggesting before we require um, over a hundred million drivers to pay a lot of money for breathalyzers when the vast majority of people uh, are responsible and don't drive drunk. Uh, we need to nip the problem in at the source, and that is with so many of these bars uh, sending drunks out on the road. Now, I know I, 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 I'm not trying to pick on uh, bars, um, but let's face it. If, if somebody has been sitting there for hours, has four or five or six beers, and then the owner of the business, the bartender, no one knows that person is going to go out and drive drunk and possibly cause some harm. There should be some responsibility in in with the bar owners. Um, so at the very least, I think there should be some kind of a federal mandate to require every uh, establishment that sells liquor by the glass in the country to be federally required to 
arranged for transportation of people who are seriously inebriated. It's the least you can do, and I'll tell you one thing, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than facing lawsuits if somebody leaves your bar, drives home drunk, and, and injures or kills someone. And that does happen. People lose their licenses because of that and get sued. So I think if you were to put uh, uh, something like that in place, what about a federal uh, DUI tax? Uh, start taxing uh, liquor by the glass to pay into a fund that would help to pay for uh, these breathalyzers that they want to install in every vehicle, um, or pay into a fund that, uh, and or pay into a fund that helps with prevention, or or provides for rides home from for people who hang out at bars for a long period of time. And the other thing. Um, are, are high concentrations of bars in, in a small area. Now, for example, the state of Michigan, uh, Michigan Liquor C Control Commission, has um, caps. They, they, their their uh, uh, regulation states that for every 1,500 residents in, in a community, any given community, uh, you're allowed one liquor license. So for a city the size of Plymouth, uh, Plymouth should only have six liquor licenses because the quota is very, the system is very clear. You can look this up in the state of Michigan Liquor Control Commission site. Uh, they're saying one license per every 1,500 residents. So you should only have, in, for example, a town like Plymouth, um, uh, six liquor licenses. They have total, including on-premise and I believe liquor stores, they have, I think, now 30. They've got five times the state quota. And it only stands to reason that when you put so many um, uh, liquor by the glass establishments in a small area, you're going to have a higher incidence of drunk driving in that area. Um, and, and the other issue is, okay, so let's say you require every vehicle to have these breathalyzers. So what does that mean? So are, is the federal government now going to tell people who work in minimum wage jobs and have a car that maybe is worth one or $2,000, are they going to say, okay, now you have to put a breathalyzer in your vehicle? This probably could very well cost more than the vehicle itself. I, I think that's very unfair. Um, and the other thing is, it's this kind of a law, most importantly, is easy to defeat. Because if, if a person seriously wants to be driving to the bar all the time uh, and, and have their, uh, their five, six, seven drinks and then drive home, all they got to do is, is, is drive a used car to the bar. And, and, there, and it's totally skirting the law anyway. So that's the other issue. Um, and I think uh, if a community has more than their share of liquor licenses, like for example, the city of Plymouth, they have a, they're supposed to only have six, they've got 30 now. If they're gonna exceed the state quota, they need to start paying a surcharge for that. Because if you're gonna cram a lot of bars into a small area, uh, and, in, and increase the incidence of drunk driving on Michigan roads, then the cities should be required to pay the state uh, a surcharge for having that additional uh, higher is incidence of DUIs on the road. And that money should go into things like prevention or, again, to pay for these breathalyzers or to help pay for people to, to get a ride home. So if, if, if a city wants to, to skirt the, the rules, then they should they should pay extra. So, and I guarantee you, if you start doing things like these common sense things, um, you're going to see DUI incidents drop precipitously compared to waiting three or four years and only putting breathalyzers on six or seven percent of the vehicles. It would take decades to get every car fitted if that's what if that's all you're going to do. What happens in the meantime? So, um, I think that's important. To mention and uh, a couple of other things I wanted to mention um, for those folks who say that this should not be a federal law or a federal issue it should be up to the states well look at it this way um, the the uh, interstate freeway system that's a federal uh, program federal money is go to maintain the interstate highway system and in many cases state roads and even county roads uh, so uh, states are getting federal money to 
to maintain their roads. So if the federal money is involved, then they have a the, the federal government has a big stake in making sure that our roads are safer. And the quickest way to do it is to start going after um, uh, people who are sending uh, drunk drivers out on the road. They put they put all the responsibility on somebody who is incapable of making decisions. And I think if, when you, once you're drunk, you you got to have somebody in these bars monitoring what's going on. So, um, and a couple of other things I I noticed. Um, I was curious what the uh, the state average is for DUIs. And as it turns out, uh, for example, if you compare city of Plymouth, which has uh, way more than their share of uh, liquor licenses. Um, is there a higher incidence of DUIs in the city of Plymouth compared to the state average? So I looked up the state um, information and according to the uh, Michigan State Police uh, 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 breath testing program, um, they have a grand total here. Uh, they have a total of um, 17,723 breath tests were given in the state of Michigan um in uh, 2018 and there were 9,832 breath tests administered and of those uh i came up with the total when you add all the numbers together the various ranges of uh, uh blood levels um there were 19,889 duis in the state of michigan in 2018 that indicated uh drivers were above the legal limit so you have 19,889 DUIs, and when you divide that by 9.99 million residents in the state of Michigan, which is, I believe, the current population, that comes out to about 0.2% DUIs on a per capita basis in the state of Michigan. Uh, using the same data set um, for the city of Plymouth stats, um, they are at 0.3%. So what you have is, you have the city of Plymouth has a DUI rate 33% higher than the state of Michigan. And the evidence again strongly suggests that when you're gonna cram in a lot of bars in a small area, you're gonna have more DUIs. Um, and the other issue, and this is kind of a side issue, but it, it's directly related and it, it involves historic preservation. Um, city of Plymouth has a historic district and they're cramming a lot of bars in this, these areas. And What's happening is that because they're adding more and more liquor licenses and more and more restaurants, it's putting so much pressure in the downtown area that historic homes that are within the historic district need to be demolished so that uh, more parking can be added. This has been a sticking point for Plymouth for years. Uh, the Downtown Development Authority complains, we need more parking, we need more parking. Well, maybe if you didn't have as many liquor licenses and putting, maybe if you weren't putting so many more drunks on the road compared to surrounding communities, you wouldn't need all the extra parking. So there is a direct link between a losing historic uh, sites and the number of uh, liquor licenses any town has. Because let's face it, the buyers want customers. They want they want more cars downtown. They want parking, and uh, these historic homes and and buildings are giving way um, for more and more parking. And that's that's the other issue. So. Uh, everything is linked together. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, and uh, I think instead of doing this knee-jerk reaction of uh, requiring, requiring over 100 million people to pay more money for breathalyzers, do the basic stuff first. Stuff first. Hold, go to the source and hold uh, responsible the people that are causing the problem before you do a knee-jerk reaction and punish everybody. So thanks very much for looking in, and I appreciate your time. Ah, I knew I forgot something. Um, just one quick addendum. Um, when I was looking into this, uh, when I started looking into this correlation issue a year and a half ago, I, I, I called, I spoke with the folks at the Michigan Liquor Control Commission, and the one thing I was interested in is, does the state of Michigan or the Liquor Control Commission keep statistics as to whether or not uh, an increased incidence of DUIs in a specific community uh, is directly related to uh, a relatively high number of uh, liquor by the glass establishments. 
because I wanted to see if they actually had data that, that indicated that, and then they told me right away, oh no, we, we don't we don't keep track of that information. Um, and it's entirely possible they don't want to know. But you know what? Uh, I think that the Michi state of Michigan should start keeping track uh, because um, they need to start realizing that when you put a high number of bars in a certain area, it stands to reason that you're going to have more drunk drivers on the road in that area. And I think that the federal government should mandate that every state do that and figure out ways to um, um, nip these problems at the at the bud where they start instead of uh, knee-jerking the entire uh, economy. Uh, it would be much more effective. Uh, and, uh, and at reducing the, the number of DUIs in the state, I believe. So they should definitely keep track of these statistics because um, if they don't, uh, it just absolves them of any responsibility to solve the problem. Um, so thanks very much. And I just wanted to make a couple of minor clarifications. Um, uh, at 2 minutes 45 seconds in the video, I said that there were 1727 new vehicles produced in the U.S. in 2014. I meant to say there were 17.27 million vehicles produced that year. And at 16 minutes, 10 seconds, I mistakenly stated there were 9,832 breath tests. I meant to state that there were 908,032 blood tests given. And whenever I uh, am using breath or blood test data, um, wanted to make this clear. Those figures were tests which showed positive. Uh, in other words, they were shown to be above 0 0.08 uh, blood alcohol level. In other words, above the legal limit. Uh, in other words, I'm not including any breath tests that showed being below the legal limit in any calculations. Um, thanks very much.